Sri Gurubhyo Namaha children, hope you are all doing good. So today is our second session of history. So yesterday what we have studied, we have studied what is social studies, what is history, what is geography, what is civics. So then we have started with our first lesson, when, where and how in history. Okay. So what did we study in that? We have studied why we have to study history, what is the importance of history. Then we have learnt about the dates and timelines. Fine. So shall we go to today's topic? So what is the topic for today? We, are, we have learnt that history is important to know about the past. So how can we know about the past? What are the sources we have to study about the past? Let us see it today. See, the sources of history, there are two main sources. One is archaeological sources and the other one is literary sources. So, first we will see what is about archaeological sources. Archaeology, what is archaeology? Archaeology is the scientific study of the past based on the physical reminds that is see it is the scientific study of the physical reminds whatever is available from the olden period whatever is available today the historians they make research and they find it out what it is so that study is called as archaeology here so we have seen what is archaeology. Now, where do they do these archaeological works? They have archaeological sites. The place where the research of archaeology happens is said to be an archaeological site. Okay? So, the physical remains are excavated. This is a new term for us, right? So, from where the olden days things which we get through these archaeology is said to be archaeological site. Excavation is nothing but digging out the physical remains of the past. See, this is the photo of Kiradi excavation which has been uh, happening for last one year in Sivagangai district of Tamil Nadu. Okay? Okay, so, we have seen what is archaeology, where do we do this work and now who does this work? Archaeologist, a person who does archaeological work is said to be archaeologist. Here, he excavates such sites and analyzes the objects and found that the how the history has been uh, undertaken. That is, the archaeologist, they just see, they take the things, they dig out, they take the physical remains, whatever is possible from the site and they make research and they find it out that when the things have been buried or when, uh, which period do these things belong. So, these are all just a picture references for archaeologist. Next, where are these excavation work being done? So, when we see the in ancient years that is on the stone age or be even before that historical period, people believed that there will be a life after death. So, what they did is a person when he is alive, the things they used, they, they took that things along with that person when he is dead, they buried the person and they buried the things along with them. So, it is said to be their ancient belief. So, they also believed that the objects used by the dead person, they may need it even after the death. So, they buried those things along with the dead bodies. Okay? So, these places where they buried the dead bodies, where they buried these things are said to be burial sites. Okay? So, burial sites are the places where the archaeological works are being undertaken. Okay? It is clear?
So, here are some Hagi, Harappan civilization burial sites, some examples of burial sites. So, this is how these places have been there already. We are making researches, we are finding out where what would have happened there, what kind of place is that. All these things we search, we find, all, all these works are of archaeologist work. So, next comes types of burial sites. So, there were various types of burial sites. So, let us see what are those. First is grave burials, next one is urn burials and third one is cyst burials. So, in simple terms grave burials are nothing but the place where the dead bodies were buried, simple. Next urn burials, urn burials are nothing but what they did is they took a big vessel and in that vessel the dead bodies were buried and the end the big vessel has been buried inside the soil. So, that is urn burials and the final one is cyst burials. This one is like they bury the dead body with the bigger stones on the top and it were built like a small uh, tomb or a small building like thing. So, cyst burials are made of huge stones and rocks. See here this is the example of grave burial. Here we can just find only the skeleton of a human body. Okay? This has been buried many, many, many years ago and we can just find only the bone pieces. So, it is an example of grave burial. For urn burials, see this is the vessel which I mentioned now. Uh, this is available in one of our Chennai museums. Uh, if we go there, we can see it there in Egmore. Okay? So, this one is called as Mudumakkal Thari in Tamil. So, this has been used by Tamil people in our state. And this is the cyst burials which I told you. See, it are the deep chambers, okay? deep chambers built with the stone lab. So, they buried the dead body inside and around the dead body they made a building. Okay. So, we have found what are the works of archaeologists, where do they work, how do they work, everything we have seen. So, now what do they get from these sites? What do they do in these sites? How do they get the things and what are all the things which gives us information about history? Let us see. See, tools and weapons. Tools and weapons handled by various people during various periods of time, be it uh, olden stone age or by the kings who ruled India earlier, not only in India, all over the world. So, all those tools have been found. Then pottery, the vessels which they have used, any kind of vessel for that matter, they would have, that, would, that is also been found. Then the paintings, yesterday we saw, do you remember? The paintings of uh, prehistoric man, you remember? So, the, such kind of paints. Then coins and seals, the coins which were being used as a medium of trade. All those things are available. Then fossils. Fossils are nothing but the remains of the animals or uh, human beings. And the cloths which they have used in the olden period, the jewelry they used and the sculptures with sculptures are nothing but the statues which we find in temples or any olden buildings. Even today we are seeing many things, right? So, sculptures are those statues. Then monuments, monuments are some buildings which has been built on olden period, fine. So, at times what had happened is the remains of the entire cities were also found, not only these things at some excavations and some burial sites, a complete city which has been buried under the sand has been found out, okay. So, these are all the only sources for the information about prehistory. Only with these things we can get to know about the prehistorical period. Why? Because 
prehistorical period didn't have any detail in writing. No recorded evidence is available other than these. See, tools. So, these are all the tools you can see it. The tools made with stones which the stone age people used. Even these are all made up of stones. So, all these tools they used to cut the animals or making fire all those things they have used these tools to safeguard themselves from any uh, opponent. Pottery, the vessels which they used in their period. See, it is broken, it is damaged, but still see the shape, it can be seen even now. See, this is the utensil which has been found in Bulgaria, which has been used 3400 years ago. Can't imagine, right? This is the pottery found in Kiradi, which is in Tamil Nadu. See how uh, neatly it has been made and uh, we can see the archaeologist cleaning and making it visible for us. Painting, this one we have saw yesterday, this is the uh, painting of prehistoric man in India, that is in uh, Maharashtra. Okay. So, in India. Next, coins. Coins gives some more details here. What is that? These are the valuable sources of information about the past. See, with the coins, we can find the, see, in the coins, in our coins which we use now, we find the number on one side and some other picture on the other side. With that, we get to know which period we are living. In some coins, you would have seen the year will be mentioned, which means the year the coin had been printed, fine. So, from the pictures on the coins, we get to know about the rulers. So, in which king's period the coin has been issued. So, that we can get to know with the pictures on the coins and also with the writings on the coins, we can know about the period of their reign and the extent of their kingdoms. So, we can get, we can know the details that from when to when they have been on rule and from where to where they have ruled, okay. So, these are all the golden coins of ancient India. See, you can find the images clearly, a person holding uh, these things, okay. Okay, so we have a separate study of coins. As we study the past, we name it as history. The same way, there is a separate study of coins, which is called as numismatics, okay. These are all the seals, coins and seals we saw. These are all the seals used in olden period. Fossils. So, these are also the very important archaeological sources. These are the remnants of humans, animals or plants that have become embedded on the rocks or ice when it has been buried and when it, it, when it gets fixed on a rock or something like that. All these are the remains of human beings, plants and animals. Okay. It helps us to understand how living beings evolved over a period of time. So, in olden days how they were living, everything we can find it out only through these fossils. So, this is there is a separate fossil park for dinosaur in India at Gujarat. Okay, there is a dinosaur fossil park and these are the dinosaur eggs which has been found in that fossil park. Cloths. So, the cloth which has been used by the olden age people. See, this is the cloth in Egypt. Okay, so this is how they were wearing cloths in their olden age. And here you can see the Stone Age people wearing only a just a bark of a tree. 
okay from tree they take the leaves and wear it as a cloth and some human beings were wearing animals dried skin as their cloth so these are all the jewelry which has been used in their period see these are all made up of wooden pieces this one is a bronze bracelet which has been used in bronze age sculptures i told you earlier it is all about a statue which has which has been made in olden age so see this is a very old sculpture of a king riding a horse is it sorry so is that clearly visible see now this is a sculpture of a very near place to us hope everyone knows mahabalipuram this is a sculpture from there monuments so now what are monuments monuments are human made structures it is usually built in memory of a person or an event so uh, we all know about taj mahal so taj mahal was built, built by taj mahal was built by shah jahan in the memory of his wife so like that in memory of a particular person or in memory of a particular event a building or a monument is built so what are all the examples of monuments the forts palaces temples and tombs are all the examples of monuments so what can we study from these monuments we can know that with the materials with which they have built and the period when they were built and the reason why they were built by knowing all these things we get to know more about the past fine so here are some monuments this one is brahadeeshwara temple at tanjavur built by raja raja solan the great king this one is a very famous temple of south india this is golconda fort of hyderabad and this one is victoria memorial of kolkata so we have seen what is archaeology archaeologist archaeological sites and the things we get through these archaeological sites everything we have seen now why are these archaeological sources important because only the available source to reconstruct the past is archaeology so where the written sources is not available archaeology is the only source as i said earlier prehistoric period we don't have any evidence of writing so only this archaeology helps us in knowing about prehistoric period to verify the written records also it is the only source so after the historical period started we have many evidences of writing but then to verify that if the written records are right we have to check it only through this archaeological sources so that's all for today wait till tomorrow for the next topic and please note that we'll be sending you the link of more archaeological sites in which you can go through and give us some uh, 10 lines of little essays shri gurubhyo namaha